in my mind It's a beautiful world I like swimming in the sea I like to go out beyond The white breakers Where a man can still be free Or a woman if you are one I like swimming in the sea My, my, my It's a beautiful world I like drinking Irish tea With a little bit of Lapsang Souchon I like making my own tea My, my, my It's a beautiful world I like driving in my car I roll the top down sometimes I travel quite far Drive to the ocean Stare up at the stars I like driving in my car All around is anger Automatic guns There's death in large numbers No respect for women Or our little ones Tried talking to Jesus Just put me on hold It's a bit swamped by calls this week He could not shake his cold Still this emptiness persists Perhaps this is as good as it gets Giving up the drink in those nasty cigarettes. I leave the party early, at least with no regrets. I watch the sun as it comes up. I watch it as it sets. Yeah, this is as good as it gets. My, 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 it's a beautiful world. I like sleeping with Marie She has one sexy girl Full of mystery She says she doesn't love me But she likes my company For now that's good enough for me So my, my, my It's a beautiful world I like swimming in the sea I like to go out beyond the white breakers Where a man can still be free Or a woman if you are one I like swimming in the sea Yeah Colin, thanks for coming to the print shop. This is for you. This is a 1922 silver dollar. It's a peace offering. It's it's called a peace dollar. All right. And they're uh, they're very. The reason that I'm giving you this is your music, uh, for me personally, is very uh, very spiritual and represents change in my life. About two years ago. I clean myself up. I know you've been through that as well. So this is uh, not just another artist coming through the print shop. This really means a lot to me. So that's why I wanted you to have that. As a Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. I can get to sleep. Think about the implication. Diving in too deep. 
possibly the complication Especially at night Worry over the situation I know we'll be alright Perhaps it's just imagination Day after day reappears Night after night my heartbeat shows the fear Ghosts appear and fade away Between the sheets Only brings exasperation It's time to walk the streets Smell the desperation At least there's pretty lights And though there's little variation It nullifies the night From overkill Day after day reappears Night after night my heartbeat shone another day Scotland and moved to Australia at age 14. One of the things that I, I learned about you is that your parents had a music store. And I was yeah. intrigued about that. Can you tell me a little bit about growing up around a music store and is that where you got inspired to play music? Well, it was a combination of things. Um, my mother and father were musical anyway. You know, my father was on the stage when he was, uh, when he was a teenager. So he was a great singer and a great dancer. And my mother was musical as well, but, uh, and then the, the war came, so he went off to fight in the Air Force for the Royal Air Force and, in the Second World War. And then when he came back from that, he didn't continue being on the stage, but he um, became a piano tuner and they, they, they got, they put this uh, little mom and pop store together in a small town on the southwest coast of Scotland. So from the age of five until I was 14, I was in a music shop with them. And uh, it was just a, it was a small store, but it was the only music shop in the, in the town. And um, they had pianos, because he was a piano tuner, they had pianos and they had guitars and drums. And 
But the records were the thing, you know, and of course, as you know yourself, between the years of 1958 and 1967 was when we had the shop. And there was the most astonishing uh, array of music that got made and produced then. So it was, and even, you know, I, I didn't really realize it at the time because, you know, you're just growing up and you think, okay, this is my life, you know, but it's really since then that, that all that music that I heard, you know, it, it becomes more impactful as you get older, you know, because you, you, you think about it a little more, you know, I, I um, you know, on a Monday they would, you would get, you know, you really got me by the kinks would come in or I feel fine singles, you know, so you'd play the singles and my father would play the singles to me. So that was another, another thing that was really cool about the shop too, when the shop was closed, uh, my father would uh, would call me, yeah, come in, come in. He, he'd call me into the shop, and he would sit down and he would just play, play singles on the on the on the on the turntable, and and so we would listen to music together. And, and that's when I first heard the Beatles, actually. And you know, he said, uh, he said, have a listen to these guys. He said, I think I think they'll do quite well. <laughs> yeah, I think he was right. <laughs> I grew up in uh, in Scotland, and until uh, I was fourteen. And then uh, one day my father came home and said, right, we're off to Australia. I said, is that a long way, Daddy? He said, oh, yes. It's about as far as you can go before you have to start coming back again. So um, off we went in May 1967. And we were, when we were walking across the gangplank to get on the ship, this song, which was, I think, one of the greatest pop, pop songs ever written um, by one of the greatest writers, The Kinks, Ray Davies is the writer, of course, and one of the greatest guitar lines. So I put this on a covers record I did a few months ago. And, uh, but it had special meaning for me just because that was our, that was our send off, going from the old world to the new. Dirty old river must you keep rolling, rolling into the night? People so busy make me feel dizzy. Taxi light shines so bright, and but I don't need no friends as long as I gaze on Waterloo sunset. Paradise. Every day I look at the world from my window. Chilly, chilly is the evening time. Waterloo sunsets fine. Terry meets Julie. Waterloo station. Every Friday night But I am so lazy Don't want to wander I stay at home at night But I don't Feel afraid As long as I gaze on Waterloo sunset I am in paradise That's fine Millions of people Swarming like flies round What a new underground But Terry and Julie Cross over the river Where they feel safe and sound And they don't As long as they gaze on Waterloo sunset, they are in paradise.
sunset's fine Waterloo sunset's fine Waterloo sunset's fine You're in Australia you're, you're, you start men at work, 1979, 1980. Yeah, 79. 79. And you guys yeah. had a residency, is that correct? You played for a couple of years? At the yeah, time. well, it, it was, um, I mean, the, the band, it was a long a long time in the making, you know. You know what it's, what it's like, usually, uh, for people is that, um, you know, I spent 10 or 15 years trying to put something together that, that, was, that I thought was going to, you know, work, that felt right, you know. So I was on my own for a long time and, and um, tried different things, different uh, uh, endeavors, if you, as it were. I mean, I, I went to I travel, went to Sydney, and which is, you know, another city in Australia, but I went up there early on and then came back. And, and so I had a band and it wasn't doing very well, so I just thought, well, I'll go back to school. So I went to university for a few years, and that was, that was in a, good, a good thing to do because it gave me time to any time to write tunes and, and to try and get better at that and to actually try and plot and scheme a little bit and try and figure out a plan of attack, you know, with how, because I didn't really understand how to, like a lot of people don't, how to get, um, you know, how to get into into music, you know, how to, how to um, get started. And so just as, as I finished university, I got this, I got this job uh, as a, as a, in the court, in a, in a musical called Ned Kelly. But just before that, I met Ron Stryker, who was the other guitar player in Men at Work, and uh, he he opened a creative door for me because he was a, a very inspirational guitar player, 12-string guitar player, six-string guitar player, and he wrote beautiful kind of, he had really interesting kind of soundscape ideas, very kind of meandering, acoustic, very uh, British influence in, in how he played. and. Uh, that was really great for me. He opened a door for me, and I kind of I wanted to I wanted to work with him. So I said to him, when I come back from this musical, we'll we'll work together. And he said, yeah, okay, that'd be good. So I came back after a few months of doing that musical, and we started we started having a residency, just the two of us, in uh, in a few places around Melbourne. And uh, yeah, we developed a bit of an audience, but we. We played covers, but we also played this original music, you know, including songs like Down Under we'd written then before Men at Work existed. So um, we started to get a little bit of a following of people who were coming to hear our original music. And then Jerry the drummer, who um, I'd, I'd met uh, at university, um, he came and joined us, so we were three-piece for a minute. And then I'd known Greg for years and years uh, before that. I asked him to join the band, and so then we were four. So over the, over the period of about two or three months, uh, we became uh, the, the band that, that made the records, and, and then uh, Ron was playing bass, so he switched back to playing guitar, and Jerry suggested we get John, John Reese. So, so it probably took about two or three months for the band to be five, and then I knew that I had this friend who was named Russell that I went to university with. He became the manager, so we were really kind of six people, and that was our kind of that was our attacking force, if you like, you know.
I drink good coffee Every morning Comes from a place It's far away And when I'm done I feel like Talking Without you here There is less to say I don't want you thinking I'm unhappy What is closer to If I live till I was hundred and two, I just don't think I'll ever get over you. No longer move to drink strong whiskey. Shook the hand of time And I knew And if I lived Till I could no longer climb My stairs Just don't think I'll ever get old CBS Records, which became Sony. They were really the only record company that were interested in us. And they signed us to a horrendous deal, you know. It was 
almost a criminal deal when you think about it. It was just a terrible, terrible deal. But were we you just, excited about it at the time? Oh, of course, you know. <laughs> but you know, in retrospect, it was it was really a pretty cynical record deal for them to give us. You hear so much about that. Yeah. So uh, the, you know, it's it's water under the bridge, but it, at the same time, it's it was bad. You know, they should have known better. Well, you know, it was okay for them, but. But we wanted to make a record, and that's the that's the way it usually is. Uh, the, the the power structure is slanted that way. And, but we weren't, you know, we weren't stupid people. But you know, when I think about that, I think we really should have got you know better advice for that. But, but anyway, what happened was we we made a single, we made Who Can It Be Now, went to number two in Australia, and then they thought, oh, that's okay, so we, they let us make an album. The album took about ten days to record, uh, but we had it. We had it. We, we had a coincidentally there was an American record producer down in Australia at the time and uh, he was working on something else and he came to see the band live and uh, he said to the A&R guy who was the guy who signed us, Peter Carpen, he said I want to produce these guys, I know what to do with them so so he did and uh, it was great, it was a great combination because we had a lot of, we had a lot of really uh, you know good songs I think and but we'd been playing them live and so they were too long you know, and there was too much arrangement in them, so he kind of stripped them back and kind of popified them, as it were, you know, and made them, you know, as, as an example, uh, you know, Who Can It Be Now used to be like six and a half minutes long. And, uh, you know, because we're playing in bars, it didn't matter, you know, because people are drinking and they go, eh, it didn't matter at all. So, um, so halfway through the song, the saxophone line would come in, you know, battle it up. So he said, well, you know, that's not going to happen. He said, you've got to move the sax the sax will go up to the front of the song because if a guy's a radio, at a radio station, he's programming these songs, you know, he wants to hear that line straight away. So we thought, oh, brilliant, you know. So he had a lot of the arrangement, seemingly obvious things, but they weren't really obvious to us, but he knew what he was doing in the studio. So we had 10 days of pre-production before we went into the studio. So by the time we went into the studio, we pretty much knew what we were going to record and how we were going to record it. So. It took five days to do the, the rhythm tracks and five days to, to record the overdubs and he took it back to the States and mixed it in a couple of weeks and we, that was it. So I came up with this idea for Who Can It Be Now um, in the middle of the Australian bush, southern New South Wales. My girlfriend and I at the time had a bit of land. She and I and the, uh, the frogs were listening to this song and... I just remember that night, it was nice. And um, for those of you who are interested, um, this, a lot of the songs, the Men at Work songs, were written um, with the E's tuned down to a D, which, was a, which basically is a drop D tuning. Very common tuning f for guitar players. And you got that nice, which is kind of tricky to do, very difficult to play that chord on the standard tuning. So, useless information for most people, but... Anyway, I'll play it for you. This is how, kind of how it first sounded before it got popified and became a big hit with the dum, dum, ba, ba. So before that, it was like... Okay. Can it be knocking at my door? Go away. Don't come around now no more. Can't you see that it's late at night? Great time. I'm not feeling right. All I wish is to be alone. Stay away. Don't you invade my home. Best off if you hang outside. Don't come in. I lonely run and hide Who can it be now? 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 Who can it be knocking at my door? Make no sound Tiptoe across the floor If he hears he'll knock all day I'll be trapped And here I'll have to stay I've done no harm I keep to myself There's nothing wrong with my 
state of mental health. I like it here with my childhood friend. Here they come. It's feelings again. Who can it be now? 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 Is it the man come to take me away? Why do they follow me? It's not the future that I can see. It's just my fantasy. minute work broke up um we don't really it's a funny thing we didn't really break up we kind of it just was one of those weird bands where you know it was we had a manager as i said russell and um a couple of the guys in the band didn't want to have russell anymore as the manager uh, they, they didn't like him and i and he, he was my guy he was my friend you know so you know i i, I was i thought that we should all be loyal to one another you know and uh, so i you know, I wasn't going to sack him, and I wasn't going to, you know, strip him of his, of of his um, title as manager and all those kinds of things. So, so the, so the rhythm section they ended up being sacked. You know, the drummer and the bass player, by four of us, Greg and Ron and I and Russell. We sacked Jerry and John, which, in retrospect, was was, um, you know, probably a mistake. You know, um, uh, certainly in the way we did it. You know. I think there's a strong argument for having like some kind of psychoanalyst on tour with you, you know, bands, because the problems you have uh, are, are not, they're, they're all resolvable, you know, and they're not really that important, you know, they're just kind of usually men together who have a very, very limited ability to communicate. So that's really what happened. And then, and then of course, so we were four people, we were three of us uh, in the band, uh, Greg and Ron and I, and, uh, and then Ron, one day through the third album, you know, he just he just said one day, he said, oh, well, I think we're going to go home. And I said, oh, yeah. And he said, yeah. And I said, are you going to come back? And he goes, nah. <laughs> and he just went home. <laughs> and he never and came he back. He never came back. <laughs> he walked out the door. He walked out the door uh, and he never came back. Yeah. And then, so that was just that left the two of us, me and Greg. And so the third record came out and, um, and that didn't do much, you know. And, uh, and then so Greg said, uh, oh, I think I'm just going to stay home, you know, and he, he, he was sick of it as well. So there was really no band left to leave, you know, so um, so I was just, I, so I was by default on my own from that point on. I know you've seen me standing on the edges of your town. I can make you feel good if you're sad or feeling down I am everywhere you care to look And if you need me, I'm around I could take you on a greyhound trip Or fly a fancy plane Sit up on a mountain top Or listen to the rain I don't fool my 
myself But if you want me I can stay or I can go I can't answer or explain How I got here or became A man without a name I could buy the latest Cadillac for people I don't know But it's not the same as I remember long ago And I'm standing in the wings of understanding I'm just waiting for you to show And I can't answer or explain became a man without a name I'm dancing with my silhouette shadows from my past my light was always shining bright but I knew it couldn't last and I'm stuck between the lines and the spaces and time is standing still can answer or explain how I got here or became a man without a name a man without a name a man without a name I have a question about one more song that's, that's near and dear to my heart, and that's Waiting for My Real Life to Begin. Can you tell me a little story about where that song came from? Well, um, I have a friend called Tom Mooney, who, um, the drummer, and uh, we were working together on a few little ideas. He would come to my house, and we were working on a few things, and he came over one morning uh, with um, 13 donuts, and I said, uh, why have you got 13 donuts? And he said, well, I went to Dunkin' Donuts and you know, I wanted eight donuts. And uh, he said, the guy said, well, we've got a special on a dozen. And he goes, I don't want a dozen, I just want eight. He goes, it's the same price, because you're crazy. You get 12 donuts for the price of eight. He said, no, I just want eight. He goes, no, take the 12, you know. Same price as eight, you're crazy. He said, okay. He said, okay, well, today, when you get 12 donuts, you get an extra one, so you get 13. So, so there was a special in the 12 donut. So he ended up with 13 donuts. And so he came around and he had these 13 donuts. And he, he sat them down on the table. And, and I said, oh, yeah. And I said, so, so how are you doing anyway, Tom? He said, oh, you know, man, I'm, I'm just waiting for my real life to begin. <laughs> and I thought, that's a good title. Immediately, I thought it was a good title. And uh, he sat there and had a coffee and had a donut. And I just wrote out the song. It's incredible, you know. You're waiting I didn't really for... change it. I didn't really change anything. I just kind of wrote out. It, it had been like he opened this door because it was it was a kind of a you know speaking of what you're speaking before about drinking. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd I'd come to live in Los Angeles because uh, I ran away from all my friends because I couldn't stop the drink. You know, it was very difficult. So I eventually stopped anyway. But um, so a lot of it's got to do with with that idea of mythologizing the past or the future and not basically taking up the space that you occupy, you know, on any, at any given moment, which is a difficult thing to do, you know, a lot of the time. But that's kind of what the song was a little bit, I think, about we all, we all go, oh, if we can just make that score, you know, if I can make that big score, it's just round the corner, or give me another hand, you know, let me, let me go again, you know everything will be all right. Or else you go, oh, for my case, like, oh, I had that big moment, you know, I want that again, you know. I want to be number one, top of the world. And that's a dangerous thing too, because you think, well, that's what that was, you know, and it may never happen. And it will not happen the same way, because nothing nothing happens the same way twice, you know. So there's a lot of, the, there's a lot of different things in that song that, that's really up for, 
for interpretation. You know, people get different things out of it, but I think it's something that just it just resonates with people for some reason. It really does. It's it's so beautifully articulated, and um, songwriters like yourself, I, I feel like it's a, you know it's a superpower that you have. <laughs> to be able to really just go from, hey, that's a great song title from, from a donut story, right? To really kind of bring that in, internalize it, and come out with a beautiful song like that. Any minute now, a ship is coming in. I'll keep checking the horizon. Crashing down, down, down on me. And you say, Be still, my love. Open up your heart. Let the light shine in. Don't you understand?
clear day I can see Or traveling with Men at Work again and touring? It's just the same band, the, the same, same band I have in LA. Okay. Yeah, it's just we're doing a Men at Work set. And you're you're on the road with uh, Rick Springfield and Rick John Springfield, Waite. yeah, exactly. In, in August, but before that, I go out and play, uh, go out and do, and, and play, uh, do a tour with Ringo as well. Oh, wow. So there's Ringo, Ringo after this tour, after the solo tour, and then and then Men at Work with uh, John and Rick, and then more Ringo, and then more solo stuff. All star so band. Kind of, yeah. I'm on the road until November. Down Under, do you, do you ever get tired of playing that song or is it one of the songs that you just, you relish and, and you love it for what it is? I mean, it's stood the test of time. It's well, beautiful. it's not really a, the thing is with songs is that, um, you know, it's not an external thing for me, a song. It just, they, 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 they live inside you, part of who you are. So it's, so I'm not really playing a song that's out there. I'm just playing a song that, that's that lives with me. Beautiful. So the difficulty you're talking about is when you're separate from it, then you think, oh, I'm sick of this song because you're you're basically putting yourself first. And if you get out of your own way and just play the song, then the song can live every time you play it because it's it's not separate from you, it just comes out. So it's not coming in, it's just there, you know, so you just let it out and you, and you just perform it for people who want to hear it. So, so that I've always had a, I've always had a very, um, you know, affectionate relationship with it. So with all the songs, you know, but that one's a bit special. Obviously, it was the biggest song we had. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's, it's just got something that um, connects with people from all different cultures. It's not even so much about the, the lyrical aspect, I think, that I think that what people pick up on is the fact that it's ultimately a song about celebration, you know, and um, of who you are and who your friends are and where you're from and um, just uh, just that, really. Yeah. Well, Colin, I wanted to thank you again for coming to the print shop. This My has pleasure. been a very special day for me. I've been looking forward to it for, uh, for a very long time. And, uh, All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. You're awesome. Thank you. That's a wrap. Colin Hay, go see him. He's the man, no doubt.
Take cover.